what are the key ideas that we'll use in solving this problem? Well, as this mass M falls, its potential energy is going down, right? Where does that energy go? Well, it becomes kinetic energy, but it's in three different places. This block is moving, this disk is moving, and this spherical shell is moving. So the potential energy that goes away here shows up in the kinetic energy of these three objects. So these are our key ideas. The potential energy will convert to kinetic energy. And the total kinetic energy is the sum of the kinetic energy of the sphere, the disk, and the falling mass. So keep in mind, the velocity of the falling mass at this location, which is what the problem is asking for, is going to be the same as the tangential velocity of this disk and the tangential velocity of the spherical shell. So that means we can say the tangential velocity of the sphere is r omega of the sphere. That's our equation for vt. vt equals r omega. But that's also the same as the tangential velocity of the disk. So that's r omega of the disk, which is the same as the velocity of the falling mask. Note that capital R is the radius of the sphere and little r is the radius of the disk. Okay, so here's our solution. The potential energy, which we calculate over here, mass times gravity times the change in height, is 4.82 joules. So that's my number here. Then kinetic energy of a rotating object is 1 half I omega squared. So I put little subscripts for sphere here. And for the disk, 1 half I omega squared with subscripts disk. And then linear velocity of the falling mass is just 1 half mv squared. I don't like working with these one-halves, so I'm just going to go ahead and double the whole equation to get rid of those one-halves. Now I'm going to plug in the equation for moment of inertia of a spherical shell. That's two-thirds mr squared. And for a disk, I, I would plug in one-half mr squared here for a disk, but the value of the inertia of the disk is given to me in a number. So I'm just going to leave it as i disk for now. I just got rid of the one-halves. I plugged in my expression for moment of inertia for the sphere. And now I need to get the variables in terms of a single variable so I can solve this. So I'm going to choose to replace omega with velocity. How are they related? How is omega and tangential velocity related? So I notice here r omega, that is the tangential velocity of the sphere, but it's also the velocity of the falling mass. So r squared omega squared is the square of this, so I can replace r squared omega squared with vm squared. And then omega of the disk, I see right here, I can divide the r to the other side. So omega of the disk is the velocity of the mass divided by r. So I make that substitution there, and now you see I only have vm as my only unknown in the equation. And it happens to be vm squared in every term. So I'm going to factor out the vm squared. The mass of my spherical shell is 4.5 kilograms. The moment of inertia of the disk was given to me as 0 0.003 kilogram meter squared. And the radius of my disk is 5 centimeters. The mass of my falling weight is 600 grams. So now I can solve that for vm, and there is my answer.